Hello and welcome to our Cheer podcast, where we will be discussing the impact of COVID-19 on the environment. I'm your host Daniel, and I'm excited to have two young guests with us today to share their perspectives on this important topic. Hi, I'm Anna, and I'm excited to be here today to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the environment. Hi, I'm George, and I'm also excited to join this conversation about sustainability and environmentalism. Thank you both for joining us today. COVID-19 has had a profound impact on our lives in so many ways, and one of the areas that has been affected is the environment. We have seen both positive and negative impacts on the environment since the pandemic started, and in this podcast, we will explore these trends in sustainability and environmentalism. Our aim is to provide our listeners with informative and inspiring insights into the role of young people in shaping a more sustainable future. We hope that by the end of this podcast, you will have a better understanding of the impact of COVID-19 on the environment and be motivated to take action towards creating a more sustainable world. So, let's get started. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our lives in so many ways, including its effect on the environment. Let's start by discussing the negative impacts we have seen on the environment since the pandemic began. One of the most significant negative impacts has been the increase in single-use plastic waste. With the rise in demand for personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves and masks, we've seen a significant increase in plastic waste, which is harmful to the environment. Additionally, the surge in online shopping and delivery services has led to increased air pollution from the transportation of goods. More delivery vehicles on the road and the extra packaging materials used to protect the products have also contributed to increased waste. Yes, that's a very good point. Another negative impact we've seen is the decrease in public transportation use, which has led to an increase in personal car use, thereby increasing emissions and pollution. Now, let's talk about some positive impacts we've seen on the environment since the pandemic began. One of the most significant positive impacts has been the decrease in carbon emissions, due to reduced transportation and industrial activities. With so many people working from home and businesses closing, or reducing their operations, there has been a significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. We've also seen improvements in air quality in many parts of the world, particularly in cities that are known for their high levels of air pollution. This has been due to reduced traffic and industrial activities. Those are excellent points. The pandemic has certainly had both negative and positive impacts on the environment. The negative impacts have shown us that there is still much work to be done to address issues, such as plastic waste and air pollution, while the positive impacts have given us hope that a more sustainable future is possible. Young people have an important role to play in shaping a more sustainable future. Let's start by discussing why it's important for young people to be involved in environmentalism and sustainability. Well, young people are the future. We will be the ones living with the consequences of the actions we take now to address environmental issues. We have a responsibility to take action and ensure that the planet we inherit is a healthy and livable one. Exactly. And young people are often the most passionate and creative when it comes to finding solutions to environmental problems. We have seen many examples of young people taking action to make a positive impact on the environment. Can you share some examples of young people who have taken action to make a positive impact on the environment? Sure. One example is Greta Thunberg, who is a well-known climate activist. She started the Fridays for Future movement, which involves students around the world striking from school to demand action on climate change. Another example is Boyan Slat, who founded the Ocean Cleanup, a nonprofit organization dedicated to removing plastic waste from the world's oceans. 
He was only 18 years old when he started this organization. Those are great examples. So, how can young people get involved in environmental activism and advocacy? There are many ways young people can get involved. They can start by educating themselves about environmental issues and learning how they can make a positive impact in their own lives. For example, by reducing their use of single-use plastics, conserving energy, and choosing sustainable products. They can also get involved in organizations and initiatives focused on environmentalism and sustainability. For example, they can join local groups that organize community cleanup events, or they can get involved in political advocacy to push for policy changes that support a more sustainable future. That's great advice, and it's important to remember that even small actions can make a big difference when it comes to protecting the environment. Let's turn our attention to the latest trends in sustainability and environmentalism. What are some of the most exciting developments that you've seen recently? One trend that I'm really excited about is the rise of eco-friendly fashion. There are now many companies that are using sustainable materials and ethical production practices to create stylish and sustainable clothing. Another trend is the zero-waste lifestyle. Many people are now taking steps to reduce their waste and live more sustainably such as by composting, using reusable containers, and buying in bulk. Those are great examples. Can you share some examples of businesses or individuals who have adopted sustainable practices? Sure. Patagonia is a well-known example of a sustainable business. They are committed to using sustainable materials and reducing their carbon footprint, and they also donate a portion of their profits to environmental causes. Another example is Elon Musk, who is leading the charge on green energy sources. His company, Tesla, is focused on creating sustainable energy solutions and reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. That's impressive. So, why is it important for businesses and individuals to adopt sustainable practices? Well, businesses have a big impact on the environment, and they also have a responsibility to take action to reduce that impact. By adopting sustainable practices, they can reduce their carbon footprint, conserve resources, and create a more sustainable future. And for individuals, adopting sustainable practices is important because it can help reduce our personal impact on the environment. It's also a way to show our support for sustainable businesses and encourage others to take action as well. Absolutely. It's clear that sustainable practices are important for both businesses and individuals. We hope that this discussion on the latest trends in sustainability and environmentalism has been informative and inspiring. As we wrap up this episode, we want to leave our listeners with some practical tips and tricks that they can use in their daily lives to be more sustainable. What are some easy actions that young people can take? One easy action is to reduce your use of single-use plastics. You can do this by using a refillable water bottle instead of buying bottled water, bringing your own reusable bags to the grocery store, and using reusable food containers instead of plastic wrap. Another easy action is to reduce your energy consumption. You can do this by turning off lights and electronics when you're not using them, using a clothesline instead of a dryer, and setting your thermostat a few degrees lower in the winter and higher in the summer. Those are great tips. Do you have any other suggestions? Yes. Another easy action is to eat less meat. Animal agriculture is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, so by reducing your consumption of meat, you can make a big impact. And finally, you can support sustainable businesses and products. Look for companies that use sustainable materials and production practices, and choose products that are eco-friendly and made to last. Those are all great tips and tricks that our listeners can use to be more sustainable in their daily lives. 
Let's take a moment to recap some of the main points we discussed. We talked about how the pandemic has had both positive and negative impacts on the environment, including increases in single-use plastic waste and air pollution, but also decreases in carbon emissions. We also talked about the importance of young people's involvement in environmentalism and sustainability, and shared examples of young people who have taken action to make a positive impact on the environment. We then discussed the latest trends in sustainability and environmentalism, such as eco-friendly fashion and green energy sources, and the importance of sustainable practices for businesses and individuals. Finally, we shared some easy daily sustainability tips and tricks that young people can use to be more sustainable in their daily lives, such as reducing single-use plastics, reducing energy consumption, eating less meat, and supporting sustainable businesses and products. As we wrap up, we want to emphasize that the impact of COVID-19 on the environment is ongoing, and it's up to all of us to make a positive impact on the environment and shape a more sustainable future. We invite our listeners to take action and get involved in environmental activism and advocacy. Whether it's volunteering with a local environmental organization, contacting your elected officials about environmental issues, or simply making small changes in your daily life, every action counts. Thank you for joining us today on Cheer Podcast, and we hope that you've been inspired to take action and make a positive impact on the environment. We want to acknowledge the support of the Cheer Initiative, which is co-funded by Erasmus+. Plus. The goal of this initiative is to provide equal opportunities for young people who are weakened by mental health problems, which have been exacerbated by both civilization changes and the COVID-19 crisis. The accompanying goal of the CHEER initiative is to improve the overall well-being of young people, including their mental, physical, and social conditions. And we also want to remind our listeners that the European Commission supports the production of this podcast, but their support does not constitute endorsement of the contents, which reflects only the views of the authors. The Commission cannot be held responsible for any use which may be made of the information contained therein. We're grateful for the support of the CHEER initiative and the European Commission, as we work to raise awareness about the impact of COVID-19 on the environment and the importance of young people's role in shaping a more sustainable future. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening to Cheer Podcast, and we hope you'll join us again for future episodes.